All right, today we're gonna to be mixing vocals with UAD Spark plugins only. We got my man Tim Sorbs, the song Over My Heart. Thanks to Tim for sharing it with us. I'll put a link to his socials, Spotify, all that good stuff down in the description. We're gonna take a listen to the verse and then we're gonna hop in. Today's video, we're talking EQ, saturation, compression, routing, signal flow, that kind of stuff. And then if you guys wanna see it, let me know, hit the like button, drop me a comment and let me know if you wanna see the effects processing with the UAD Spark, getting into the chorus, delays, reverb and that kind of stuff. We'll call this part one, and then if you guys demand it enough, we'll move in and we'll do a part two showing off the effects. Let's take a listen. We got two kind of separate vibes in the verse, and then the chorus changes. Beautiful track. Let's take a listen to the verse. Well, I really start to hide from the people who just need to stop and not offer their mind. Not offer their mind. Not offer their mind. Right on, grooving along, and then we get to the chorus, and this is what it sounds like. And over my heart, the sun went down, the sun went down. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. So right out of the gate, my tip number one is listen first, then process. If you jump in here and you just start compressing it and EQing it and what have you, you may be missing out on, you got a vocal sometimes that's already compressed and you're going to compress it more. Why are you doing that? Let's have a purpose for each plugin, each bit of processing that we do. Let's have a reason for using it. In this case, you can hear that we do need some compression. You've got some words disappearing. You've got some words jumping out. And so we're going to use a series of compressors to kind of bring that vocal in a little bit, sit it on top of the track nicely. I'm going to show you how to do that, but first we're going to hit it with some EQ. I like to EQ into compression because typically vocals come to me pretty dull. They're not boosting top in and, and getting that sheen in the tracking process. Most of the, the, the people I'm working with, for whatever reason, nowadays you got kind of that clean, sterile recording. And so we're going to bring a little life to it. I like to boost the top in into the compression so that the compressor will re react to any of those harsh S's or sibilance that kind of cuts through. The compressor is going to react more to that if you EQ into the compressor. And so here, starting out, I've just got a, a default API channel strip here. It comes with the UAD Spark. Again, check that out. 14-day free trial. Link in the description. I'm going to engage the high-pass filter. I don't think I need it. I don't hear or feel anything. I, I mix with the sub pack. I'm not feeling any low-end resonance in his voice. It's recorded fairly well. So I'm, I'm going to set that more as a safety. But again, nothing that I'm worried about down there. I don't feel like we need to go any higher than 100. Some vocals, a cool technique is to crank it. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. You can hear from 200 to 100, there's not that much of a difference in his voice, but you could abuse it, kind of engage it, put it all the way, and then slowly back off until you feel like you're missing something. And then that's kind of a, a happy setting for uh, for the high pass filter. All right, moving on, let's take a look at the EQ. We're gonna engage the EQ. Now something with the channel strip here that what I would do is if I knew I was gonna go to this chain day in, day out, I would go ahead and engage. If I know I'm gonna be high passing quite a bit, I know I'm gonna be using the EQ. If you're using the compressor, go ahead and turn those on. And then if you're in Pro Tools, whatever DAW you're in, you can do this. Go over and save you a, a setting call it the whatever I call mine the DG default save that and then also in Pro Tools you can go over here and set as your user default and then as long as your settings preferences are set to the user setting now that's going to be those are going to be on for you you won't have to click them on every time you can just get to, to being creative and shape them with the uh, the EQ and compression there but anyways little Quick tip, moving on, let's take a listen to Top In. I wanna accentuate this, I wanna pull out some of that airiness in his voice and see if we can get it to, to sound good. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. And over my heart, the sun went down. A little bit goes a long way, 6 dB, I said a little bit, that's a decent amount, but uh, it's nothing crazy. Great sounding top end. The other uh, frequency range I want to look at is kind of the 800 to 2K range. Sweet spot in a male vocal lives somewhere in that 800 to 3K range. It's going to pull him forward. You want to be careful. Female vocals may be a little bit higher than that. Depends on the register, the voice, all, you know, things considered. But let's take a listen to 800 hertz. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. Of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. And over my heart, I actually like the 800, it's feeling good to me. We're gonna stick with that. The other thing you've got here with this API channel strip is the ability to take your high frequency. I have it as a shelf, which I should have mentioned. That's that 
ultra top end it's going to be nice it's going to boost above the frequency point if you wanted it to be a little more focused you can hit this and change that shape to a bell and it's going to be a little bit more peaky but anyways we like that where it was as a shelf uh, a little bit of 800 sounds good now, i'm almost feeling like typically I'm looking to cut 100 hertz, 200, 3, 4. I'm looking for where is it a little muddy. A lot of vocalists that come my way that are just eating the mic and get the proximity effect. And so I'll use a dynamic EQ multiband compressor. Unfortunately, UA does not include either of those in their bundle yet. Don't even know if they make one, but a cool trick you could do is you could molt the vocal if you're strictly working with the UAD Spark stuff. You could duplicate the vocal, isolate the, the low 100 to 200 frequency range with this low and high pass filter, and then compress that maybe harder than the upper mid range or what have you and deal with it. Getting a little, little ahead of ourselves with that, but for this video, we'll, we'll stick to kind of the, the fundamentals of it. Moving on, let's take a look. And the reason why I brought that up is instead of cutting lows like I typically would in a, in a male vocal, we're going to look at maybe even boosting a little bit to warm him up a bit. So let's take a listen to that. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. Overdriving him a little bit. Let's see. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. And over my heart, the sun went down. The sun went down. So I boosted him first, uh, what was it, around 200 or so with a shelf, and that was a bit muddy. You heard the overdrive, but then I pulled back, and then what do we got here? It still looks like a shelf. I'm going to actually go for a bell, so I engage this here, switch it from the shelf to a bell, and let's look at uh, kind of that 150 range. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. I like that. I like a little bit of 150. I think that sounds good. Now, if I were using the compressor on the channel strip, I would come over here and do pre-dynamics. Me personally, I like that top end to go into the compressor for that compressor to react to it. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're going to move on. We're going to look at the next bit of processing. And for me, I like a little bit of saturation and the Studer, what better saturation than that? I've chosen a preset, the Vocal Presence preset. That's gonna be a 30 IPS here. The IPS uh, is gonna have the most open top end. And you go to 15 and 7.5, it's gonna actually reduce a little bit. So depending upon the genre, you may want more, you may want less. It's a cool little kind of tone control there. And then I've turned the noise off. Let's uh, set our input. And output, let's see what we get from it. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. And over my heart, the sun went down, the sun went down. Because of our hearts, we all fall. So we're getting a little bit of color, a little bit of saturation, but we're also getting some compression. It's kind of balancing out just a little bit. It's it's subtle, but it's there. And it's not a just a pristine, clean vocal anymore. We like that color, and uh, I certainly think that it fits this vocalist. Now, got, UA, if you're watching, if you're listening, man, got to get a mix knob on this plugin. The character is incredible. If I go in here, one of my favorite things, I'll tell you what, I'm going to copy it and show this off. One of my favorite presets in here is a cassette deck preset and then i'll turn the noise off watch what this does man check out the the color you can get let's go in solo because of our hearts we all fall down we all fall down oh love that the saturation and then you get a mix knob and just get like 15 to 30 percent of that oh i used to use uh the blue cat audio what's it called patchwork i think it's called patchwork and it gave you the ability to put a mix knob on any plugin and do all kinds of crazy parallel chains and all that uh, but I would just use it for the mix knob on the Studer. Incredible little for kicks, for uh, drum breakdowns, any kind of effects, you know, room mics where you just distort the room mic. Getting ahead of myself here. We're focused on vocals today, but uh, cassette deck, incredible preset. Drive it, give some character to it. Fun stuff there. Next up, remember we talked about how that vocal, we had some words that uh, were jumping out at us and some that were disappearing. We need to level that out. We're going to do that with compression. And my first compressor of choice is the 1176 AE. And the reason why I choose the AE is because it has a two to one ratio. So we have two to one 
four to one, or we could do all buttons in 20, whatever. But for this first compressor, this genre, I'm gonna be a little more careful with the compression and do it in stages rather than if I was mixing a heavy rock song, I may just grab the Reve, slam it 10, 20 dB of reduction, depending upon how it was recorded, hit it hard, one and done, you're done with one compressor. But in this case, like I said, we're gonna use it in stages. And this first compressor, I'm gonna go with a kind of medium to fast attack. I want those words that are jumping out. I wanna push the transient down. I wanna knock down the the initial attack and so to do that I'm gonna set this at kind of a medium to faster attack and yes a faster attack on the 1176 is to the right the slow attack which is gonna let the transient through is gonna be to the left it's kind of opposite of what most compressors are but we're gonna set that kind of mid to fast attack and then all the way fast on the release let's take a listen to that because of our hearts we all fall down we all fall down two to one's working great five to seven dB, you may go for a little less, you may go for a little more. I'm gonna be fairly aggressive with this because he did have some words that jumped out quite a bit above us, and I wanna just knock those down and, and get a little more balanced tone. So right out of the gate, two to one, working good. We can go back and forth to four to one. Let's see what that sounds like. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. And over my heart, the sun went down, the sun went down. I'm gonna back off a little bit on the input. How was, uh, let's check in context here. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down. So it's doing a great job. Those words that were sticking out, let's go find, we all fall down, I think is one of them. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall, so listen to we all fall. We all fall down. We all fall, fall jumps out at us. Now let's listen with the compression. We all fall down. Without it we all fall down huge difference and that's just our first compressor so moving on we knock down the transients of those uh, louder words typically I would go from that 1176 knocking down the initial transient kind of controlling those peaks to an la2a and UA they have three versions of the la2 you got the silver the gray and then the la2 the old school all sound great they have different time constants so the silver is going to be a little bit faster release you've got like our verse over here where you want the uh, the compressor to react and get the heck out of the way before that next kick snare vocal line comes in uh the silver is going to be your go-to for that in this case i chose not to go la2 because even the silver was still a little bit too slow for those quick lines there and so what i chose is the 1176 rev a and we're going four to one a little bit slower on the attack because I know I'm going to do parallel compression. Let's dial in this. Let's see how it sounds. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Cool. The thing I'm getting from this, I'm getting a little bit of the room noise is coming through now. Um, so I might back off a little bit on that. And then also the release is set so fast, we're getting all the character from this compressor. If you drive it, you can really, there's a quick tip, pro tip, abuse the settings on the compressor. Drive more signal, 10, 20 dB of reduction, really hear what's going on and then dial it back to taste so that you know what you're, uh, what you're getting from the compressor. Let's drive this and see what we get. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Cool, so that's pretty aggressive. Now let's pull the release back and see what the difference is. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Not off of their mind. Hear that one more time. That's a pretty big difference. Here's smooth. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. And then with the, the tone, you get a little break up here. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. Sounds great, but for this particular vocalist, I've already given some saturation with the Studer. I don't want any more. I don't want it to kind of overtake the vocal tone. So I'm going to back the release off just a little bit, and it should smooth it out quite a bit. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not off of their mind. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just beat themselves that are not. Well, I really decide to hide from the people who just. Yeah, definitely getting more saturation there. So we're going to back the release off just a little bit. This is much faster than the LA2, even the silver. So uh, backing off the release that much, it's still going to be a faster release than what the LA2 is going to give us. So that sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to back off the input now so we get less compression. 
Well, I really like to hide from the people who just meet beside and not offer their mind, not offer their mind. Well, I really like to hide from the people who just meet beside and not offer their mind, not offer their mind. Now let's go find a section that's clear as day. You can hear what's going on. Maybe this last uh, bit. Here's without the compression. Not offer their mind. No, let's go to the, the chorus. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. I mean, it's pretty locked in there with that first one, but now let's take a listen with this. We all fall down. I mean, it's not going anywhere. We probably could even use less of that. We all fall down. We all fall down. We all fall down. Gain stage it a little bit up, and we're moving on. So now we've got a pretty locked in compression sound. I don't think we really need the vocal crush, but I get asked all the time, hey, we can do a vocal crush tutorial. So I'm going to do it, and then we're going to compare and see if we need it, if it helps it, if it helps it blossom up a bit. It probably will, but uh, let's take a listen with and without it probably would be important to show you my routing first. So we've got the lead vocal here. We've got the processing as we've done. What I do is I send this into a track called Vocal Crush. This is a bus right here labeled Vocal Crush. And I throw, pick a compressor, right? This is 1176 is a good one. The distressor could be 1176 into an LA2. You could hit it with multiple stages here as well. I like to hit, pick one, hit it hard. API is great. 2500 is an awesome one for this as well. There's actually even, we're going to look at it, a vocal leveler preset that does wonders on the parallel. But this is just all out compression. Engaged, uh, I think it's all buttons in at, at this point. Shift click is going to give you, so if you have two to one, four to one, eight to one, clicking on each of these, 20 to one, or shift click, and you can have a combination of multiple of them, that famous all buttons in sound. We're going to go all buttons in, let's dial it in, and then what you see here is we got the lead vocal, compression, saturation, all that good stuff, EQ, sends into the vocal crush, so this is this signal coming into the vocal crush, hitting the 1176 hard, and then the two of these actually meet at the lead vocal level bus and so lead vocal and vocal crush if we zoom in here you can see the output is set to lead vocal level for each of those so we take the compressed signal it's compressed pretty good then that parallel compression is going to flatline it and those two meet at the lead vocal level where now we can hit it with more eq saturation deassing whatever else you want to add but then i also send which is part two if you guys hit that like button enough uh, lead vocal level is going to be where I send to the effects. So all my delays, chorus, modulation effects, reverbs, any kind of special effects, anything I'm doing to the vocal is going to get a nice kind of consistent vocal tone into it sending from the lead vocal level. So let's go back, lead vocal crush, let's dial this in. We're going to unmute it, put it up to uh, full frequency here, full uh, full volume, and let's see what we get. Because of our hearts, we all fall down, we all fall down And over my heart, the sun went down, the sun went down Because of our hearts, we all fall down I mean, we're, we're slamming that thing. Let's go back to the verse, where we've got a little more action happening. I'll feel my history defining what went wrong. I'll see the patterns in ancient carvings and bathroom stalls. I'll feel my history defining what went wrong. So there's without it. We got nothing in there. The volume's kind of dipped. Let's pull that up a hair. I'll feel my history defining what went wrong. I'll see the patterns in ancient carvings and bathroom stalls. Well, I really like to hide from the people who just beat themselves out and not off of their mind. A little thicker, a little more tone, a little more full. I'm digging that. Uh, I was thinking we had the, the kind of level we like, but there's two ways to use compression. You can use it to reduce the level, those peaks, um, and uh, reduce the dynamic range, excuse me. And then you've also got the tone factor of all. Well, why do you need an LA-2A versus an 1176 versus an uh, API-2500 versus a distressor? They all have different characteristics and tone. And so this one, the 1176, abusing it like that, gave it a nice tone. We're filling it out. It's just beautiful tone there. Anyways, word of the day, tone. So uh, vocal crush, that felt good going to the vocal level. It, you could hit this if you wanted to. You got a dense mix and you need that vocal just like... 
squashed, you could hit this with another compressor. Um, typically, this is where I'm going to do any more EQ work, and then, like I said, sending into the effects. But this vocal, I do not believe, needs any of that. However, let's talk about something not UAD for a second. If you have a vocal where you've hit it with compression, you've hit it with parallel compression, and there's still like a word here and there where it's not cutting it. You can see in this track, I've got some lines drawn. Throughout this mix, I've gone and I've done a couple of things. One is I've pulled the breaths back by compressing it that much. We're taking the low level breaths and we're enhancing them. And often that's not desired. And so what I've done here is I've gone through and I've highlighted the breaths that were too loud and I've pulled them back with clip gain. And Pro Tools is called clip gain, uh, depending upon your DAW, it may be called something else. But I'm going through and I'm just reducing the level of those breaths to offset what I did with those the heavy use of compression. Uh, you can see also we've got, so mostly breaths, but here's a word where the S at the end, forget sibilance, it actually couldn't in understand the word without boosting it. And so I boosted the volume of the S at the end of this phrase here. Bathroom stalls. The S was just a little bit, a little bit back from the mic. And so by pulling it up with clip gain, now that word is a little more intelligible. Bathroom stalls. Yeah, it could probably even, Go here and pull it. OCD is kicking in. Not important, but you get it for the t for tutorial sake. You understand, I think, that uh, pulling those up can be beneficial. Just clip gaining. Just going through, pulling up. We got the breaths down, breaths down. I wonder, is there any more where the phrase is? Yep, here we go. Is a word that I boosted at the end of this phrase. We all fall down. Yeah, I kind of kind of gave up on it, right? And so we pulled this up with clip gain, and now we've got an even signal going into the compression, but most importantly, sitting on top of the track. We all fall down. Cool. And that's that with clip gain. Now, the other thing that you can do, let's get creative with it. You may have a section where the vocal needs to be a little more smooth, a little more intimate, not so much of that parallel compression. You may come, let's pretend out here we had like a drop off vocal. Actually, we may have. Did we? Because of our hearts. Look at that. So we've got a, a low lying vocal here. That's too much compression for that section. So what I might do is come in here and automate down the parallel chain. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. So the drums are coming back in. I'm going to let it uh, have the parallel compression when the drums and everything's in. But for this softer section here, I'm going to back off that parallel chain. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. Because of our hearts, we all fall down. We all fall down. A little more natural. I like that much better. Uh, I think this section here was also. And over my heart, the sun went down. The sun. And that's to taste. You may like it, you may not. But if the vocal is a little bit, it sounds over compressed, go ahead and just automate, pull back the vocal crush for those sections. Or. If you have a section where the vocal is kind of getting lost and lead vocal level pulling the volume up is getting a little bit too peaky, you could actually enhance or, or lift up the vocal crush at those sections and flatline the vocal so it sits on top of a dense mix. Mixing vocals with UAD Spark. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have questions, if I skipped over anything, anything that uh, you'd like to learn more about, drop a comment, let me know, and I'll be sure to get back to you. And like I said, hit like, and I will come up with that, uh, that second tutorial showing off the effects. Let me know if you want to see that and then if you haven't yet i've got a free vocal mixing checklist for you guys link in the description it's going to take you through how i mix a vocal when it's well recorded similar to what we did here today uh going a little more in depth with things like saturation and multi-band compression and that kind of stuff but also a poorly recorded vocal dealing with that dreaded closet vocal stuff that's too sibilant not compressed at all all over the place the vocal mixing checklist check it out link in the description and don't forget ua 14 day free trial for uad spark show them some love and uh we'll see you in the next one thanks again